Knicks back at home, riding a four-game winning streak, taking on one of the best teams in the East, man, the Milwaukee Bucks. And uh, you know what? This one started off fairly well for the Knicks. This was a defensive 90s-style game, man. Both teams bricking away, but refusing to give an inch on the defensive end. And Knicks were going well. Paced by Jalen Brunson, of course. Captain Clutch had it going from beginning to end. But it was a tale of two halves, man. And as the Milwaukee Bucks were cashing three after three after three, the Knicks and Tom Thibodeau had no answers, no adjustments, and just sat there and watched it all crumble. Shout out to Brunson once again, man. Captain Clutch with 14 in crunch time. But it was too little too late, man. Bucks win. 111 to 107. JD, this one, you know, on weekly, I had the uh I had the Knicks losing this one. Recording in progress. Because with the Bucks having gotten embarrassed at home against the Charlotte Hornets, I, I thought they were gonna bring their A game to start this thing off and really take it to the Knicks. And I just didn't think we were gonna be able to match that. But Give the Knicks credit because in this game, I thought their defensive effort was pretty good to start. And even though they didn't have it offensively, they were taking care of the ball. They were defending fairly well. The defensive game plan against the Freak was working. They were walling them off. The help defense was pretty good. Mitchell Robinson chipping in. Julius fighting hard on the defensive end. And with Brunson cooking on the offensive end, they had enough there. To hold this team off, at least for the first half. But in the second half, you know, Ingles was a guy I was worried about. No Chris Middleton for the Bucks, but Ingles is a guy who's coming back, who came back from the knee injury with the Bucks. I was worried about him as a facilitator, as a three-point shooter. He starts knocking it down. Knicks have a 17-point lead with five minutes to go in the third. And Ingles starts cooking. Portis having his moments. Connaughton, Grayson Allen. Fourth quarter, Bucks hit, shot 8 of 17 from downtown. Knicks continuing to overhelp in the paint. Overhelp in the paint. Evan Fortier, where are you? As Clyde said on the telecast. Let's leave Pat Connaughton wide open for three. They said on MSG, the Bucks went 4 6 from the right side corner, 4 6 from the left side corner. 8 of 14 from the corners alone. So then we got a battle on our hands in crunch time. Captain Clutch, Jalen Brunson, doing his best to get this done for him. I got his, I'm rocking his jersey. I'm rocking the number 11 tonight. 14 points in crunch time for Brunson. But it was too little too late, man. Yeah, Drew Holiday with 6 points. And look, I thought Grimes' defense on Holiday was good. Holiday was just better, man. You have an all-star veteran point guard who got a cook and got activated and tried to seal this deal for him. Bucks got some timely offensive rebounds, second chance opportunities. And, and that was it. It's a bad loss. Bad loss uh, for me for the simple fact that, as you mentioned, going into the game, you know, it, it looked like a tough matchup. You know how the NBA works is ebbs and flows. Uh, you have good teams like the Bucks, which, you know, lose the game that they lost uh, last game versus the Charlotte Hornets. And it's just natural for them to want to come to the Madison Square Garden and, and kind of get back on track. But that did not happen. Uh, the Knicks showed up. Uh, they played tough defense. thought their defense was great for much of three quarters yeah. uh, of, of this ball game. Um you know, when you overcome a one in twelve start from Julius Randle, and and you still are able to to build a seventeen point lead, I mean that's a that's a great opportunity to steal a win, and it wasn't even stealing a win because when you're up seventeen, that's a comfortable lead. Right. You should find ways to close that out, um, and so that's why to me is a bad loss. It's a tough loss, but it's a bad, it's a bad loss. loss. It's a bad loss. Uh, I thought the Raptors game was was an internal statement game, not an NBA statement game, but an internal statement game because you beat a team that just has your number. 
So no matter what their record are, you were able to show that 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 you can beat them. So I thought that was an internal statement win for their own personal confidence. And then tonight at the Garden, I was looking for them to build on that and start to rack up some wins. You know, you have an interesting schedule coming up. And, you know, it, it's it's another minor setback in this continuing kind of roller coaster of what is this team in the grand scheme of things. You don't have R.J. Barrett, but they also don't have Chris Middleton tonight. Right. So you think in terms of production, that cancels out there. Uh, but it, it, it's a tough loss, man. And, you know, the thing I hate about these losses, C.P., is a performance like Jalen Brunson. 44 is a performance points. like Emmanuel quickly. Like you was cooking. You know, is even overcoming a tough start from Julius Randle. And he's still giving you that effort uh, defensively. Like those type of things, man, you want to get a win when you get those type of performances. Uh, just just, just for the, for, the, for the sake of the team and, and the confidence of the players. So... Tough loss, man. I, a lot, some questionable decisions for me. The, the the defense, you know, that was very questionable in terms of not adjusting to w the way the game was going. You know, it, it was good to start out, but in the fourth quarter, these things, you know, the the Bucks got hot, right? And you had players like Brook Lopez, uh, and and Grayson Allen, and uh, catching fire in the fourth quarter. Won't lie to you, I chalked this up as a loss, mm -hmm. but I just don't like the way it went down. I feel like I would have gone down all right if it was the Greek freak giving us 50 because that's what I expected. But the way we lost is the way we lose a lot of games to the Bucks. these wide open threes. And I say that to say, it's at the end of the day, to me, it's Tibbs. If we keep losing the same way all these games, it's going to get real ugly. And I say that on defense and offense because now we're still relying on Brunson, who almost saved us tonight, but he can't do that every night. Yeah. So something's got to change at least a little bit if we're trying to make these playoffs. And my last point is that I like your point on Grimes and Holiday. Mm -hmm. Holiday's just a great player, mm -hmm. and this could be a learning, a learning lesson for Q. So I'm all right with that, but mm -hmm. adjustments got to be made. That's all. Yep. Appreciate the call, man. Adjustments got to be made. You hope you get RJ back. They said RJ's making progress. You got OB back tonight. He hit a three. Didn't play too much, but you hope they start to ramp his minutes up and ramp Hartenstein's minutes down. The, the, for me personally about this game, I mean, you can't play Giannis any better. I know Randall struggled, but like historically, this entire team just struggles against the Bucks. For me, Styles make fights and matchups. And it, like, I'm, I'm like, again, I'm judging this season based off what I see Tom Thibodeau do with what I call a chess moves, the the pieces that, that go on that nobody really cares about. And that's like in the second and third quarter. CP, JD, I got to tell you all the truth, man. I need I need I heart off this team. <laughs> if, I could, <laughs> if I could, I would say other things excessively, but I need I heart off this team. So Leon Rose, when you're thinking about what you got to do on a trade deadline, here's, here's what it is, man. RJ Barrett was missed sorely. Because you need quick off that bench to capitalize and spell people. At this point, we need we need relievers. So I, I feel like Leon Rose has to do And again, I, whichever way you fall, either you with Tibbs or not, I'm not here to get in your way. I'm here to say that if it works out the way it should, if Thibodeau can't outcoach a, uh, another playoff team in a stretch, in the playoffs, he's going to get his job removed and revoked. So I want to get a wing player for all these D all these DMP players that's not playing. Reddish, mm. Evan, Evan's here and there, but it doesn't even matter. Derrick Rose is a folktale legend, and I wish him the, the, the best going forward. But Leon Rose, you got to get me a wing player that can play mm. with Quick, Obi, and RJ when you put the bench in. because And I need to get iHeart off this team, and I need to put Jericho in. I know a lot of people were upset about Obi, but me personally, it's like it's like this. If you got Obi on the floor and you got him with Mitch or or Randall, he has to guard either Giannis, Portis, or Lopez. That's a tough ask to ask Obi day one, mm -hmm. coming back. So I just need more, more. I wouldn't say more talent on the roster, but I need more weapons on the roster. And I know mm -hmm. if you wait patient enough, you could address that in the draft. Correct. But if you're going, 
But this is a playoff team. Whether whatever you fall, this is a playoff team. So if you could get something for people that are not even a part of your future, then go ahead. As long as it's not at the expense of your future. Uh, y'all, y'all know all the names. I'm not gonna bring them up. That's neither here nor there. I don't have a favorite. Just who do you want? Whatever. Who do you want? Throw a name out me, there. Who do you want? Me. I mean, today Gary Trent Jr. came up, and like mm. I kind of like that because a lot of people say, "Well, okay, Kuzma, no, because the ball usage, and everybody would have to share one rock, one planet." Everybody says no to Levine because that contract is gross. I agree. So for me, I'm looking at a person that doesn't need the ball in his hands. And doesn't need like to be or feel like the man, but he could still get involved. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, I just don't know if I want to do business with the black Danny Ainge and Masai <laughs> Ujiri. So, yeah. So that's the only hiccup. But hey, this is what it is, man. It's the NBA, and it's, it's every team is going through this. Every team seems to be buyers, and I think the Knicks are probably going to be buying as well. So CP, JD, peace and love. I love and miss y'all. I'm gonna come back more often. But this is a playoff team, so now I'm just trying to figure out where I can take it without destroying my future. So peace and love to the room, man. We move on to fight another day, man. So once again, people, um, go to Knicks.com slash Blue Wire. Get your Knicks tickets today. Make sure you guys are getting to these games at MSG. Go to Manscaped.com and use promo code KFTV for 20% off plus free shipping. And go to prizepicks.com and use promo code KFTV for an instant deposit match on your deposit of up to $100. We here, man.